Today we've got a great revenge story that completely takes place in a parking lot. We'll get to that great revenge in a bit, but first, revenge on creepy cousin. My whole extended family went on vacation when I was in middle school and stayed in one big house. When we were about to go swimming and I was changing, my younger cousin kept coming up to the keyhole and peeking in. I was a 12 year old girl and he was a 10 year old boy and I was really upset. I'd yell at him and he'd run away, but then sneak back. I realized that the door opened out towards where he was coming from, so after I was all ready, I watched for him to come back and slammed the door into his head right as he was bending down to peek again. He screamed and of course his mom came running and I was like, huh? I opened the door because I was done. Why would I have thought to see if he was there and totally played dumb? It's not like he could say anything to defend himself because then he'd be in trouble. I didn't get in trouble and he left me alone after that. He was always bigger and stronger and this time I felt like I won for the first time. I just feel bad for OP, like having to deal with this creepy, stronger, younger cousin. It sounds to me like maybe they were kind of protected by their family or they could feign innocence enough in other situations. I'm glad that OP finally figured out a way how to put a stop to it and gave them a lasting reminder too. Also, hi, I'm Steven, and if you enjoy awesome stories of revenge, why not hit those like and subscribe buttons down below? That said, our next story is Unintentional Consequences of a Cylindrical Object. This was some years ago, but when I lived in the Burbs, there was this 25-year-old guy that hung out with kids still in high school and would drive by every day with a massive lifted truck yelling profanities at us. We didn't personally know him, just that type of guy. One day, he threw his soda at us driving by and we had enough. My friends and I had bought a giant cylindrical object as a prank months ago and decided to super glue it to the back of his truck. Come to find out, he was dating two girls, one was mid-twenties and had a kid with him, one was our age in high school, 18. For a week, he didn't notice the cylindrical object and he would drive by with it flailing around on the back of his truck. He also had the hanging balls on his truck, which was even more hilarious. Back then, Facebook was the thing, and when he found out, he accused the 18-year-old girl of doing it. The 18-year-old girl publicly posted that her ridiculous boyfriend accused her of putting her cylindrical object on the back of his truck, and the mid-twenties girl saw it and put two and two together, realized she was cheating. They both ended up breaking up with him, and the girl in their mid-twenties posted a picture with the cylindrical object on the back for everyone to see. To this day, he's still single from what I can tell, and never knew it was us. Not that great of a revenge story, but who would have thought? To clarify, the guy lived up the street from us and I was friends with the 18 year old girl on Facebook. She went to the same high school as me, that's how I saw all of it go down. The cylindrical object had suction on the back of it so it's meant to stick to surfaces or walls. Not sure if it was super glued or gorilla glue, but whatever it was, we held it on for a few minutes and it stayed. I think honestly the most surprising thing to me is a guy that was willing and able to go around and get multiple girlfriends never ended up dating anybody ever again. Like maybe instead of dating they were just, you know, keeping it a bit more casual. Maybe they were burnt on the whole dating thing after both their girlfriends found out. Our next story is in hospital. Today is day 13 in hospital. I have a severe back condition and awaiting surgery. I've been on my new ward for about 5 days. I'm the youngest there. I'm in my early 40s but young at heart. I have six kids and I'm sort of the practical joke mum. Put fake spiders in their beds, sew up their pajama bottom legs so they can't get in them, etc, etc. So you now know a bit of my personality. I live in chronic pain. I take fentanyl, morphine, gabapentin and other drugs but can't care enough to write them all but I try to be happy, jokey and just take the piss out of everything really. I'm the youngest in my ward. I'm sharing with five other ladies. I'd got on with them well till today. We were chatting, well mainly three of them. I just chip in when I feel like it. I'm too busy listening to Prime and trying to build my Lego Ghostbusters car to be moaning about things and acting more important than others. We were talking about snoring. They said I snored. Okay, I snore, I don't care. I rarely sleep well due to pain so if I get three to four hours sleep, great. My OH doesn't moan, so I can't be that bad. I jokingly said, well, you snore a lot, but I don't moan about it, and laughed. 
Well, core blimey, you would have thought I've done a poop on the floor. One of them said, you lot, you lot. And the other one chimed in, us lot, we're ladies. I then did the little Britain lady thing and laughed and she said, we are ladies. We're your elders. You should show your elders respect. I disagree. I think respect and politeness gets muddled up. I'm polite to people. Very polite. But my respect needs to be earned. The woman next to me then said that I had my light on till 2 a.m. the other night. Yes, I did. I had my light on in my area with my curtain around me, but I was mindful and put it as low as I could to not disturb her. When she asked how long I'll be, I tilted the light so it was darker in her area. I tried to respond, but they cut me off and told me the conversation is over. So tonight I didn't bother adjusting the lamp and I didn't care if it annoyed her. I know it's not much, but I can barely walk at the moment, barely sit up, and I'm weeing into a bag, so let me have this little bit of revenge. Firstly, do you think respect needs to be earned by individuals, or is it a given right? Secondly, any advice on how I can get some revenge would be greatly appreciated, as I'm being bullied by three coffin dodgers, and it's really not helping at the moment as I'm missing my kids, family and friends, and I'm feeling like a bit of a failure. I don't know what's going to happen to me and I'm in constant pain, so a bit emotional. Thirdly, I fell asleep before I posted this. I've not long been awake. Someone asked how she slept. She said, not great. When asked why, she said because of the light. I couldn't help but feel really pleased and a smile spread across my face. Petty, I know. Yeah, I honestly do agree greatly with OP as far as respect is earned. Like, at the default, from the get-go, you should show respect, regardless of somebody's age. But if they show that they aren't worthy of that respect, they don't deserve it. Wouldn't you guys agree? Our next story is, Nurse Judgments Backfired. I helped my friend during the COVID-19 vaccination program in my community. After the program, she introduced me to the rest of the team. She told them that I used to work for the same company. And then this one nurse raised her eyebrow and loudly said, Oh, you're one of those who got laid off during the pandemic, huh? I felt overwhelmed on her remarks, but my friend said, Oh no, she resigned on her position because she's attending medical school to become a medical doctor. The nurse was stunned and quietly apologized. I guess my friend got my back on putting judgmental people in their places. Although I don't really see like a great revenge here, it's nice to really put people in their place when they try to judge negative things about you. Also, I don't even understand why this would be that negative of a thing to say or accuse somebody of. I mean, a lot of people lost their jobs through no fault of their own during the pandemic. Our next story is, don't mess with me, I'll tell your mom. For some backstory, I, 20 year old female, live in a dorm at my university. I unfortunately was assigned a room this year right next to this guy, 20 year old male, we'll call him Cole. A guy who in the first two weeks of our freshman year dumped my friend and said she was easy and slept around to her face. Ever since then I've hated him and his jerk friends who haven't stopped talking crap about her. Living next to him this year has been awful. Cole and his roommate and friends who frequently visit them yell, bang on the walls, and loudly shame women and comment on their bodies. Needless to say, this guy sucks. So the other night I was drunk and ordered food while my boyfriend was over. Every time I order from Grubhub, I make sure to get down to the front door as fast as possible because it's common for people to steal orders outside. As I'm headed to the entrance my food was left at, Cole and his friends walk past me with bags of food in their hands. I go outside and my food is gone. Cole sucks, so I immediately suspect that he stole it. I thankfully catch the elevator before it closes and see one of his friends telling him to put it back. I say, is that my food? They all awkwardly say yes and Cole hands me my food. Then another friend says, okay, well put the other one back. Cole's holding another bag of takeout with my friend's name on it. I say, that's my friend, I'll take it to him. While we're going up floors, I start to cry as I'm inebriated and very overwhelmed by what just happened. Then, everyone in the elevator laughs at me, trying to stifle it with their hands over their mouths. I leave the elevator in tears without any one of them saying a single I'm sorry. I go back home drunk and pissed and hungry. I tell my boyfriend everything and he's pissed. He asks me if I want him to go over and tell him off, even suggesting to slash his tires and key his car, but I wanted to hit him where it really hurts. I go to Facebook and find his mother through his account. It only took three minutes to find her. I DM'd her and told her, 
everything. Not only just what happened, but all the misogynistic and mean things he said to women and my friends. A few days pass and my RA texts me that Cole is requested to formally apologize with the RA as a witness. Apparently, since it was attempted theft, the RA would have to report him and it would be put on his permanent record if he didn't apologize. Totally coincidentally, I saw that Cole's mom had opened my message a half an hour earlier. Sounds like his mom scolded him and probably demanded he apologize. I went to the apology thinking to myself, this better be a scholarship saving apology. But he did what I assumed and gave a BS, unemotional apology and thanked me for not reporting him. But the satisfaction of his mother knowing what a jerk he is was all I really needed. Honestly, this is a great, honestly underrated method of revenge. Most of these people have a social media profile that you can probably find maybe some relatives from. If you do a little searching around, you might be able to find mom. And granted, maybe if they are acting like that, they come from a lineage that all acts like that and maybe doesn't care. But just maybe mom does. And for anyone who still loves their mom, you gotta know there's one thing that hurts the most and it's your mom being disappointed in you. Like legitimately disappointed in you and your life. Our next story is... TP trouble. I share a bathroom with other people. They like to play the, if I leave one piece on the roll, it doesn't count as empty so I don't have to change it game. My solution, if the roll is left empty or with one or two pieces, I will gladly put a new one on the holder the wrong way around. I don't care if it's backwards, but I know it bugs the heck out of them because it's always turned around the next day. The best part is that they can't say anything because then they would have to admit that they never change it. You gotta love that it's probably just about the exact same amount of work to go and put a new roll on as it is flipping it around. It's like if you're that bothered enough to be willing to do that, why not just put the new roll on? Where do you gotta go in such a hurry that you gotta wipe your butt and sprint out of there? You literally can't take 60 seconds to just change it? It's the same thing as the people who, for some reason, don't wanna wash their hands or brush their teeth, so they'll turn the water on and just wait the exact same amount of time it would take to legitimately wash your hands. Like what even is the point? Just actually do it. Our next story is, Entitled Girl Causes Drama Surrounding My Friendship With Her Crush? Now she has a reason to be mad. My 24-year-old female friend group consists of about 10 people, give or take. A good mixture of men and women, all varying in ages from 24 to 37. There's also this new girl, a 27-year-old female, that we've been hanging out with. She hasn't been particularly kind to me, but she's friends with my friends. For example, she bartends at the place we frequent, and she won't even serve me while she serves everyone around me. She ignores me so obviously and frequently that others have even noticed and pointed it out. I never understood why she was so mean, but I didn't take it too personally. I also catch her giving me death glares rather frequently. This entitled witch took me aside so she could ask me questions about the guy she likes. Jay, 35-year-old male, one of my friends. From the way she was talking, I assumed her and Jay had been together for a minute. She kept saying that she knows about Jay and I, so I had to tell her at one point, one of our other friends did try to hook Jay and I up months prior, but things were so platonic that we hadn't even kissed. So we began dating other people and were content just being friends. We're great friends, he's one of my best friends. Sometime after this conversation though, she told Jay that she had heard that Jay and I hooked up. We hadn't and she caused drama surrounding our friendship that was secluded to him and her. Presumably, since I hadn't heard about it until after everything unfolded, it turns out though that she has that conversation with every pretty girl she sees talking to Jay. But Jay's been telling everyone that there's nothing going on with him and A. He's not interested, she just has a crush on him. Thursday though, Jay asked me if I wanted to come with him while he went to the next date over in a semi. Why not? How many other chances will I have in my life to ride in a semi to pick up potatoes? I have a friend that's actually requesting my company? Cool! I brought my canvas and paints with me. At one point during the drive, I shared a snapchat with my friend group of my canvas and Jay inside the semi with the caption, Spud Run. A immediately sent a chat and then deleted it. Then the girl who's known for causing a scene and happened to be working with A at the time, sent a chat that read something along the lines of, what's going on? 
I'm gonna get pissed if no one tells me. OP, are you with Jay right now? That sure looks like his truck. Jay sent a chat confirming that we were in the same place at the same time. Two different people told me that it was wrong of me to hang out with Jay, knowing that A has a crush on him. I told them both the same thing. A's not my friend, she's never been nice to me, and I'm not obligated to tiptoe around her feelings. A sent me four paragraphs worth of messages. We're talking 5,000 plus characters a paragraph, telling me she's not the reason for this drama, she never said that her and Jay were a thing, rumors just go around. She doesn't care that I've slept with Jay, I hadn't. She just cares that I slept with her ex-boyfriend, still, I hadn't. She doesn't care to be friends with me because I'm not her favorite person, she repeated that five times. That I can screenshot the messages and show whoever I want because drama was not her intent with them, and that it wasn't wrong of her to ignore me, but that I've gotta stop telling people she gives me death glares. Jay and I did end up hooking up, but I don't know if we would have had it not been put in our heads. After all, we did spend about 24 hours bonding over the drama that A created. Honestly, like, the ending does not surprise me. First of all, they were willing to invite you to do a long drive with them in a semi-truck. I mean, it doesn't seem outlandish for platonic friends to do, but it seems like a, a bold choice to ask a friend to go with you on. But also, yeah, A creating that drama and creating a situation where all through that ride they're sitting there together they can honestly be laughing and cracking up about this and how it all just involves the two of them and how it would kill this person if they were together and you know all the things they do that seem like they make them so close and you know hey it's no surprise that that genuinely sparked a few sparks our next story is jealous tantrum leads to drama which leads to work issues I had a few dates with a guy, let's call him Snake, like 20 plus years ago. I was vaguely aware that he'd been dating this other woman, Jay, but she had moved to another country a year before, and there was no indication that they were still together. He said they were pretty casual, they never lived together and were never exclusive, per everyone who knew them. I was sure to ask around before accepting a date with him. It was the general consensus that it was fine. I didn't have a way to get a hold of her before the internet was reliably available in many countries. After a few dates, I had since decided that he was cute but had caught him in some lies and he displayed some red flags about manipulative behavior. So I said let's just be acquaintances. He was fine with it, he was clearly playing the field and no hard feelings. It was pretty common in our group to date around and not be jealous or serious at the time, but people were respectful of each other. Well, Jay came back a few months later and made a huge scene screaming and yelling at me in a nightclub. I was like, what the freak? A mutual took us out of the club and mediated a long conversation between us. It was ridiculous. I was like, I'm not responsible for Jay's feelings and don't really care that she's mad, but I'll sure try to work it out. I was like, hey, sorry if I hurt your feelings. I respect you and that was not my intent. But homie's been playing the field, so you may want to address your rage at him rather than me. It took hours that I will never get back in my life, but she finally calmed down and was able to see that he had lied to her and to me. We made up, commiserated that he was manipulative to us both, and she agreed that her feelings were not my problem and apologized for making a scene. I was not too happy about being put in the other woman role and would never agree to that. I told her I had guys cheat on me and it feels gross and I don't want to be a part of that. I thought she believed me. I didn't hate him or anything and was fine seeing him at social functions. I barely knew this woman. I would just see her at parties or clubs or whatever, but I thought it was all good and things were chill again. I had no idea if she got back together with him or what and didn't really care. It wasn't my business. Then she started working at one of my work sites. It was a social services center with lots of vulnerable clients getting basic needs met. I was in another agency that would come by and pick up certain clients for services in the evening. I had been doing my job for several years and had no idea she wanted to do that kind of work. We were cordial at the work site and I offered her help getting more work and experience in the field if she was interested. She was gracious and friendly, no issues. This becomes important to know later. I also knew all of her bosses for years and was tight with them and know 90% of the clients really well, having worked there before and having been in the field for a long time. 
I was decently well respected and I loved the people at the site. A few months later, I was driving with my friend on my way to a party at a mutual friend's house. I saw Snake and another male friend, Kay, getting off a bus to walk to the party. It was kind of a schlep and they had some musical equipment so we pulled over and offered them a ride. This is pre-Uber as well. We pulled up and got to the party and I helped them and some other folks by bringing their equipment into the house. It was a party of musicians and people were gonna jam and I'm always happy to help with a designated driver ride, make food, bring booze or whatever I can so I can rock out. It was something I'd been doing for a long time and would do again. No big deal. Well, apparently Jay was there and saw me, gasp, talking to Snake and helping with the equipment. She, unbeknownst to me at the time, stormed out the back and flounced out in a huff. I never even saw her. She never asked what was going on. I'm allowed to talk to people and give them rides. It doesn't mean I'm humping them, sheesh. I enjoyed the party and drove some other musicians to their homes later. Like I said, no big deal. A week later, I come into the social services site to pick up my clients and I see her. She glared, stomped and flipped her ponytail in a mini fit. The whole room got quiet, clients noticed, staff noticed, all eyes were on me. I just ignored her antics and called out my clients names from the list to get them on the van. I got no time for nonsense when I'm at work. As a side note, this was a woman's slash non-binary only space. And while working there, I've broken up many fights over boyfriends or girlfriends between clients. Like, people throwing lunch trays and stuff. So I am stoic as freak when people bring drama at me. The clients were stoked. Ooh, staff drama, heck yes. So I ignored her and did my job. I was thinking, wow, that is super unprofessional. But I am not letting that crab rub off on me. Get yourself together, girl. But I kept my bland, pleasant expression. This made her even more pissed and she stomped off to a back office. The manager was there and looked at me with curious eyes. I knew she was going to squeeze me for deets later. I got home and Jay left a voicemail on my landline machine. Yes, I'm actually 100 years old now. Stating that she knew I was still hooking up with Snake and she said, You're not my friend, very clearly. She also said, Snake and I are soulmates and you can't keep us apart. And complained about the night I came in with him like a couple. I was like, oh good grief, you've got to be kidding me. So I called her back and got her voicemail. I said, first of all, you said I'm not your friend. Thank you for that. I am officially freed from worrying about your feelings ever again. Second, I spent way too much time dealing with your emotions about your perceptions of my behavior. I was done with you and you acted like a donkey at my place of work anyway. Third, while I'm on the subject of work, If you ever even look at me funny in a work situation, I will get your butt fired so quick your head will spin. Fourth, go make a wonderful life with your soulmate who likes to screw other women. Best of luck with that. Five, leave me the freak alone. I know it verbatim because my friend and I wrote it out and I just read from the paper. I was sorting things recently and ran into it, so I decided to post it here. The next time I worked at the work site, the big boss, BB, a freaking bad to the bone lady who has my eternal respect, pulled me aside as I expected and asked what was up with Jay. I told her truthfully my side and said I was disappointed that she was so ridiculous at our work site and this needs to be a safe place free of drama for our clients. I told BB I would continue to ignore Jay's drama. She said, don't worry about it. I never saw Jay again. Apparently she was fired for her behavior and yelled at BB when BB asked what the freak was up with her and screeched that I was a devil woman or something. Epilogue, I'm still friends with Kay, the other musician guy 20 plus years later. Yay social media. Epilogue 2, my friend S who knew Jay from working social services ran into her at a coffee shop. S is a Snoopy witch, so she got an update that Jay is a yoga teacher now. Hopefully she's happy and found a more suitable person to be with. Yikes. Wow, I can't believe this all took place 20 years ago in 1980, right? Definitely not 2003. I think that maybe is what pains me the most beyond the whole drama queen nonsense she displayed. Our next story is divorced and she refused to believe it. 2003, 20 years ago, young 19 year old male, dumb and on the rebound, I met someone online. 
ex-girlfriend told me not to date her, best friend told me not to date her, everyone said the same thing. Six months later, married and I can almost identify the day she conceived our kid, now almost 19 himself, she had her IUD removed and didn't tell me. The actual marriage time, living together, lasted about a year. I started hooking up with a coworker. Yeah, I'm a jerk, but always a but. She refused to work, claimed health issues wouldn't even let her hold down a desk job, but didn't mind sitting in front of my computer all day playing games. EverQuest mostly. Smoking, eating food, but not a job. She had a lot of other issues too. Both stepdaughters were being assaulted by the younger one's father. She knew and did nothing. She is a crappy member of an indigenous people. Demanded a free house but refused to live on the reserve, welfare, pawned all my crap to make bills each month, rarely showered, withheld sex as a weapon. When I very often outlogicked her in an argument, she'd threaten me with a knife. In modern days, she's worse about her hygiene and our son won't speak to her although she blocked him on all socials because he wouldn't move in with her. She got her youngest daughter kicked out of a house so she could have it. Still doesn't have a job and blames everyone else for it. Annually tries to scam 50,000 US dollars from people for a surgery. The issue is real, I've seen the x-rays. But she doesn't want Canada to do it for free because they don't use lasers. Drugs. I was the only one making money at 850 an hour with a two hour commute gas was over $4 at the time. Plus, I was feeding four people on that as well, sometimes five when the youngest came over. I was starving myself. Anyways, walked away for the most part but still saw my son regularly, got a better job, then joined the army. My son went to live with his grandparents, single soldier stuff, and his mother signed away her rights to an extent. From the time I walked out, 2004, until July 2012, she kept refusing to sign papers to finalize the divorce. My first sergeant said, you will get divorced or get court-martialed. I had a daughter with another woman while in the army, so I got divorced. Put an ad in the paper she claimed to read, never responded. Divorce granted, all debts belonging to the debtor, but because we're married in Canada, the US could only handle the divorce, not custody. Well, she denied the divorce ever happened, every day. She claimed she couldn't find the record on the state's vital statistics site, but I could, and she was mailed a divorce decree back in 2012. Roll up on October 2020, I'm on my way back home after a visit to my origin and visiting friends. I get a call from some freaking lawyer in Toronto. She hired a divorce lawyer and was suing me. <laughs> I tell the guy, it happened. When I get home, I'll scan it and email it. Scanner was broken, so I took photos with my phone, and I called every day for a week to confirm he got it. He was not happy. This is one of those stories where you finish reading it and you're like, there's no, like, hero in this story. It's kind of like a bad guy convention where nobody's necessarily in the right and nobody's really coming out on top, so to say. Our next story is, block me in? I'll block you in. So, about a year ago, I was at a lake way north from where I live. I came back to the parking lot to find my car blocked in by someone who thought it was a genius idea to leave their car directly behind three parked cars. I was the middle car, definitely couldn't get out. I waited and waited and right before I was going to call a tow truck, a couple walks up and casually gets in the car and proceeds to drive off. I quickly backed up, circled around the other way to get to the parking lot exit first. I get to the exit and he's right behind me. I throw the car in park and just sit there. Ten seconds later, he's laying on the horn. Eventually he gets out and walks up to my window and starts yelling profanities and tells me to get out of the way. Something to note here, there's only one exit in this parking lot and the entrance for some reason has one-way spikes to prevent people from leaving that way. No idea why since this is just the parking lot for a lake. Anyway, I cut him off and tell him he made me wait 17 minutes and 20 seconds. I timed it. When he illegally blocked me in, and I intend to wait 17 minutes and 20 seconds to let him leave. He storms off, calls me a few names in the process, and floors it in reverse. He drives down to the entrance and without noticing the spikes I guess, drives right into them. I see his brake lights come on at the last minute and POW! Both front tires are done. 
I then decided 17 minutes was a waste of time since he'd clearly be there longer than that, and so I left. Made the rest of my day feel much better. I love that because this guy was so enraged and upset, they went and made a foolish decision that in no way can be tied down to OP. I mean, maybe you can say for the few minutes OP was blocking the car in, there's some kind of something, maybe stretch of the imagination you could charge them for? But let's be real, nobody's gonna follow up on that. I hope this guy has the money for those tires. But with that being said, that's all the time we have for today. Now if you want to hear another awesome revenge story, check out that video on the left. Or if you missed my latest video, check out that video on the right. That said, I'll see you all next time with some more stories.